Welcome to NFL Primetime. Just moments like these that come just a few times in your life. The hungriest day. What is earned? Watch. We got fight. We got lay down. We are the best. Pass it right down the middle. Intercepted by Tufan. He is going to go. Touchdown, Seahawks. And the last of a significant individual passing march has fallen. To the record-setting arm of Brett Favre. Drops now. He's going to run. How about that one? The game, the season, on the line, and David delivers. Touchdown, Patriots. And for the first time in the 88-year history of the National Football League, the first time any NFL team has won all 16 regular season games. America and welcome into NFL primetime. Glad you are here with us. Trey Wingo, Merrill Hodge, Mark Schlereth. All right, guys, the New England Patriots. That was great. Regular season, best in the history of the NFL. That's over. Saturday night, Jacksonville came a call into Foxborough, and on one level, with a win, the Patriots could match what the Dolphins did in 1972. Go 17 0. Of course, that Dolphins thing had a Super Bowl title to go with it. There's Tom Brady. He's unshaven and ready. And there was David Garrard. The Jags got the ball first, and they took care of business. On fourth and one, he could have gone short. He went long to Mercedes Lewis inside the 10. Brady says, wait, we're the only ones that go for it on fourth down. Later in the drive, third and goal. Garrard buying time, buying time, buying time. He's going down. He, wait a minute. He threw it, and maybe more inexplicably, Matt Jones caught it. <laughs> and way too <laughs> close to call. I think if Belichick would have called this, no way would they have overturned it. Thus, the red hanky goes back into the sock. Okay, after you score by law, you've got to give it to the Patriots. And you know what? You go on fourth down? Hey, we've been doing this all year, fellas, okay? Randy Moss, keep that in mind. That was his only catch of the entire game. Later on the drive, Brady with time. This will be thematic of the evening. And finally finds Ben Watson, who was in pretty good coverage there, but the game is tied at seven. All right, they're in this game, Jacksonville is. Just do what you do, manage it, don't make mistakes like that. Ty Warren literally uses his head to cause the fumble mark. Well, you know what? Great pressure right here. Just a straight bull rush. Creates the turnover. One thing you don't want to do when you play New England, give him the ball. That led to a Lawrence Maroney touchdown. They were up 14-7, but back they come. Fred Taylor, I tell you what, the Jags, unlike in Pittsburgh, Merrill, uh, stuck with their identity. They ran the ball in the first half. Yeah, they did not deviate from it, and when things got out of hand and they got behind, they came right back to it to reset them, calmed them down. Tell you what, the Jags really took into that front wall of New England's defense, which is sort of the problem they had towards the end of the regular season anyway. Two plays later, second and goal, Garrard with all kinds of time, and what a great throw and a great catch by Ernest Wilford. 11 plays, 95 yards to tie the game at 14. But again, the Patriots do get the ball back. We're going on the reverse to Wes Welker. And Wes Welker cuts back inside, picks up a first down inside the 25. Great blocking. Oh, look at Tom Brady right here. Even Tom Brady, put your head down, cross the bow, get involved. Okay, well, you know what? I did it for a minute. But uh, my uh, guys, I was going to make the As tackle. you said about receivers, not exactly a trained killer <laughs> yeah. out there, but it worked. And this is not what you expect. Steven Guskowski from 35. No. Del Rio fired up. Brady a spot cross. A tad miffed. A bit irked. I tell you what, if you want great quarterback play, this was your first half of the postseason. Look at the numbers. Brady was perfect, 12 of 12. Gerard was 12 of 14, but because he had two touchdowns to Brady's one throw, he had a higher passer rating of 150.6. Move on to the third quarter. Boy, the Patriots under Bill Belichick have been so good making adjustments out of the half. And you know what? That didn't change in this game. Patriots second and two, Maroney, and suddenly we've got a running game for New England, Merrill. They did a good job because you know what? Jacksonville's front seven was struggling defending the run. Patriots were happy to do the counteraction and get to the perimeter. And then maybe the greatest fake you'll ever see for Wes Welker for the touchdown. Look at this, Mark. The, the Academy Award goes to Tom Brady. Holy fake out. Turn your back, and you only have to fool one guy, Merrill. You fool one guy. They did it. Wes Welker in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. Brady finds him. 21-14. Again, advantage Brady like in all forms of life. And then look at this. Third and 11. Garrard puts it right on the hands for Dennis Northcutt. And that right there 
was the thing that sealed it for Jacksonville. He makes that catch, whole different ball game. They settle for a field goal, 21-17. And then Maroney again, great running and pretty good block from Randy Moss. This running game was working for New England. Maroney, 22 rushes, 122 yards. Later in the drive, third and three. Brady, again, all kinds of time. Ben Watson for his second of the game, pats up 28-17. They sacked him on the first play and then never really got to him before that. And then Matt Jones trying to make a catch here. This was the story of the game. Another bad spot, the hands. Yeah. And that's why you drafted Matt Jones, to make those kind of plays for you. You're trading touchdowns for field goals. They kicked another one 28-20. But you know what? Listen, apparently every once in a while something doesn't work for them either. Wes Welker drops one that was right in his mitt. Brady can't believe it and says, all right, you're, trying to, you're dead to me. No, he's saying you're fine. We'll move on. You did a nice thing. All right, so here was the, really the last play of the game. The 31-20, fourth and six. Garrard's got to try and make something happen, and there's the ageless wonder, Rodney Harrison. He picks it off, and that pretty much ended your ball game. Tom Brady, yes, we win again. They move on to the AFC Championship game. The final score, 31-20. Bill Belichick now 13-2 in the postseason as a head coach in New England. The Jacksonville Jaguars made a valiant run, but once again, Bill Belichick and company knew exactly what to do. You know, in the end, it's just, it was a good football game. Uh, played well enough to win, made enough plays that we needed to make when we needed to, when it was critical time. And uh, so now we're, we're on, to, on to next week. And uh, we know we'll keep getting tougher every step of the way through the playoffs. Uh, so now whoever it is, we're, you know, we know we're going to have to play better and play our best football next week. We're very fortunate this year. And, and, and the thing about it, like I said, we're 17-0. and 0, and It's great, but it all comes down to this week. So uh, we got to really play our best game. I hope I'm zen-like for another week. That would be a, be a great feeling. Um, I was very proud to play with these guys. Tonight was another night, another good example of that. Everybody played with their hearts. Everybody left nothing in the tank. You know, all in all, uh, some, some good energy put out. Uh, I was proud of the effort and all that, and um, just not quite good enough to advance against a team of their caliber. So um, they, they, they move on, we go home. Well, I'll tell you what. You saw a drop there by Wes Welker. That happened twice in this game. Wes Welker dropped one. There was another incompletion. Other than that, Tom Brady was downright perfect. 26 of 28. Are you kidding me? It is the best quarterbacking performance in the history of the postseason, breaking the mark set by Phil Simms, who actually called this game and watched his record broken when he went 22 of 25 against the Broncos in Super Bowl 21. Tom Brady, just another phenomenal game. The biggest reason why, really, this team is now 17-0, two wins away from running the table regular and postseason. Mark, we can talk about Tom Brady all you want. He was phenomenal again in this contest. But you know what? When push came to shove for the New England Patriots, that front line was able to shove around a pretty stout Jacksonville deal. Uh, they really were. They did a great job in pass protection. But you know what? They gave them an opportunity to run the football. This offensive line was tremendous. The edge of this offensive line, the tight ends were great setting up the run. You see Lawrence Maroney right here hits toward the middle the strength of the Jacksonville Jaguars defense but then pops it outside. You see the guard right there pull around seal the edge. Maroney on the edge and now you've got wide receivers out there doing their job. Not necessarily great blocks but getting it done, getting in front of people, and then Maroney right here on the counter action on the edge. You see Kyle Brady right there with a the block, sealing the edge again, and Randy Moss actually doing a very good job downfield blocking. This group was tremendous, and I think one of the things you have to understand, the Jacksonville Jaguars said, hey, listen, this is a team that's got big plays down the football field. We've got to eliminate that. Sometimes the mindset is stopping those big passing plays, yeah. and you're not so much attention to detail on the running part of the game, and that's what the, the uh, New England Patriots were able to explode. Well, they did do a very good job. They only had the one play to Moss. They had the one catch to Moss. They had the one, uh, the one big play to Dante Stallworth that kept the drive alive. So that they did do that. They kept most of New England in front of them. And I'll tell you what, Merrill. Look, give New England all the credit in the world. Nobody's been able to beat them. Nobody can play 60 minutes with them. But as you watch this game, you looked at that defense and you thought, okay, if we had some more dynamic receivers on the Jacksonville yeah. offense, maybe they could have been taken. Wait, what is that uh, Bill Belichick serves? Humble, humble pie? pie. Okay, well, here's a little bit of humble pie that I know he's going to be serving when they go to look at the tape. The defense really struggled. Too many jacks
Jackson, the wide receivers were wide open. There was a lot of bust. It could be mentally or whatever the case may be. And Jacksonville at times, even when they were covered, had great opportunities to finish plays that they just did not do. This one right here, I thought, just was devastating to them. It was a beautiful throw. North cut is there, and instead of peeking at the hit and watching the ball come in, it ends up going down. And then the you coffin corner throw, that's why you trapped him, that's why you got him, and he drops the football. Aside from those two plays that are drops that David Garrard played as good as you expect, you could expect coming into here if you're Jacksonville, and then the wide receivers that were wide open, you've got to assume this. If it's the Indianapolis Colts that come rolling into town, those wide receivers aren't going to drop them. And if those wide receivers are open like these Jacksonville wide receivers are wide open, they can score more points than your offense, and even though your offense is extremely dynamic. Absolutely true, but we say this every time somebody plays New England. Wasn't it? New enough. England does whatever they have to do for 60 minutes, and everybody they play comes up just short. And this was on a night, even though Tom Brady was almost perfect, the team was far from perfect. Several 15-yard uh, penalties on this game yep. against New England, and they still were able to survive. Much more on this game later as they move on to try and go 18-0 in the AFC Championship game. As for the NFC side, Mike Holmgren and the Seahawks back. Brett Favre had snow. What do you think happened? You are right. Mike Holmgren back, this time against Brett Favre. They used to do so many things together. It was snowing at Lambeau Field as Seattle came to town, so all's going to work right for the Packers, right? Swing pass uh, to Ryan no. Grant. Fumble! Leroy Hill causes it. Lofa to Dupu. Lopes does way to the one-yard line. Sean Alexander. Runs it in, 7-0 Seattle. All right, so let's go back to Ryan Grant, get him some confidence. I mean, he's been so good all year. Fumble! And it's recovered by the Seahawks. Just so we understand here, he had one fumble all season, two in the first 69 seconds of the game, Mark. Well, great job by Russell right there, putting your hat on the ball, good hit, exposing that football, and he gets it out of there. All right, your first postseason game. Is he nervous? How would he respond? Well, tell you what, Seahawks took advantage. Hassle back to Bobby Ingram. Seattle just like that with less than... Five minutes playing, up 14 to nothing. All right, Brett Favre says, guys, look, I've been here. It's snowing. We're good. Greg Jennings, see you later. Touchdown. Favre was six for six at this point, 14-7. And then they went back to Ryan Grand Merrill, and that turned out to be a really good decision. <laughs> a great job, because, you know, after you fumble two times, you become a ball carrier where you're worried about not fumbling. But Ryan Grand did a great job of complimenting his blocks. Yes, he certainly did. You know what? And the Green Bay Packers just mashing people hat on a hat and getting great movement off the line of scrimmage. And now you can become a runner. And giving a great job of coaching to go back to Grant. Goes to the one-yard line there on 15 yards. He's taken us this far. Let's finish it off. 14-14 with the touchdown. And Brett Favre says, yeah, baby. Now the snow's working our way. Back to Seattle, still tied at 14 on their own 15. Matt Hasselbeck play fake. Marcus Pollard is wide open, and so is the football. Packers recover the fumble right there, and suddenly you got the feeling as the snowstorm built, so did the mojo for Favre and company. That's Jennings second. They're up 21 to 14. And then classic Favre. He escapes. He's falling down, and zing! Right to Donald Lee for 11 yards. That's that's Brett. In a Holy Harry Houdini. Look at him right there. Falling, stumbling, bumbling. Oh, I'll just throw it to you. You go ahead, take it. All right, so Jennings has got a pair at this point. And let's go back to Ryan Grant because he gave us, and now he's taking back his second. It's 28-17. Keep in mind, it was 14-0 to start the game Seattle. You know what? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And for the rest of this game, Ryan Grant won broke, Merrill. Oh, boy. You know what? He gets a seam, and he is north and south. The only mistake he really makes is he sees that offensive line wash everybody down. He just tried to make too many moves right there. He's a north-south guy. Just run, baby. Well, he went down and kept going down. And then finally, okay, let's see what we had. Grant with a couple. We've had Jennings with a Let's go to Brandon Jackson see how that works out. That good. 35-17, lame Lambeau leap there. And then, okay, find the Packer with the ball. In a blinding snowstorm, nobody from Seattle could find it. Their choice of white uniforms, I think, somewhat problematic. Grant for a 43-yard pickup. Over 200 yards in the game, just the seventh 200-yard rushing game in postseason history. And that summed up the day. Mike Holmgren was getting pounded on by snow and the Packers. 
There's Grant one more time, and they win it running away. All smiles for the ageless wonder. They go up 42 to 20, and that's the score that I win by. Favre, 18 of 23, 173 yards and three touchdown passes. But what a performance by Grant. After a horrible start, three touchdowns, 201 yards. They spotted him 14 points, and they still win by 22. We didn't have to throw the ball a lot, thank goodness. Um, but what, you know, what throws we did have to to attempt, I thought we caught the ball well. I thought our protection was was outstanding versus their guys. Um, whether it was 42 or one, one more than we needed, it, it was a good win. I think our team battled like crazy all season long. We overcame a few things early, got it going a little bit, allowed us a chance to play in this game today. I, I wish we had played better. You have played these type of title fights, you're going to have your ups and your downs, there's going to be bumps in the road, but you got to keep, keep fighting. You know, and that's the model that I live by. Just keep working, keep pushing, things will work out, and that's what we just stayed by. I had a lot of support from everybody, just keep it going, stay up, they back me, and we were able to get it done. Well, kudos to Grant and kudos to the coaching staff for sticking with him because if he lost any confidence after those first fumbles, he didn't show it, and the coaching staff didn't show it either. After those two giveaways, Grant ran for an additional 187 yards and three touchdowns, again, on his way to the seventh 200-yard rushing output in NFL postseason history. Not bad for your first playoff game of your career. And, Mark, Ryan Grant was tremendous. Can't take anything away from him, but I tell you what, when he really got rolling there after those first couple of fumbles, a lot of times he wasn't touched until he was five, six, seven, eight, nine yards down the field. Uh, you know, Ryan Grant, so hard for him to stay confident, I would imagine. I mean, I know if it was me, I'd be like, oh, in the tank. There's no way I can come back from this. Two but, holding penalties and you're done. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Grant stayed in there, and I think this offensive line, Brett Favre, everybody rallied around him and said, hey, listen, we're going to lead you to promised land. You just do what you do. Don't worry about it. And they mashed the Seattle Seahawks all over the football field. Here you see Grant to the outside. Nobody on force. Great design and then right down here at the goal line you want to talk about getting after people you want to talk about reestablishing a line of scrimmage that is flat out nasty running now press the hole get everybody moving take advantage of the athleticism of the Seattle Seahawks get them further than they want to go and then create the cutback lanes Ryan Grant did a great job of running the football but I'm going to tell you something everybody on that offense that offensive line those tight ends those fullbacks and even Brett Favre what a great job of blocking and establishing a new line of scrimmage as you mentioned you know they needed to establish a new line of scrimmage because the snow kept wiping it away but you just got this feeling as this game went on and all this stuff was happening suddenly the snow was piling up the yards were piling up how else could it end but with Brett Favre and company doing what they did and one of the reasons the Packers were able to do that Merrill the defense really stepped up for yeah, Green Bay. You've got to realize Ryan Grant gave the 14 the points. They gave Seattle the first 14 points. The Packer defense gave up six. This defense smothers you. Every player is being man-to-man -man and smothered by what Green Bay's philosophy is. That means they challenge everything. They blitz your quarterback. They play man-to-man -man on the outside. Your back comes out. They man-to-man -man him. It's imagine this. Imagine like your boss comes into your job and he stands by you and walks around with you all day. You become nervous. You become uncomfortable. And the second you make a mistake, the Packers make you pay. The one thing that I love about their style is that, yeah, you may get a play on them. You may get a couple but over 60 minutes they will get more plays on you they make you nervous you never feel comfortable they smother every aspect of it I mean you must be so sharp and so accurate and so dead on and just very few teams can play at a high level like that and it made it very difficult for a Seattle team that doesn't really run that much anyway playing in these conditions trying to come from behind uh, after those first couple of scores by the way interesting note here uh, Seattle scored first and Jacksonville scored first so far teams that score first in the postseason this uh, this after the regular season are one and five and they've lost seven of eight going back to last year so kids Chargers Colts Giants Cowboys try not to score first the other on Sunday <laughs> let the other team do it lots more coming on this edition of NFL primetime we will go back to Foxborough where the next game the Patriots will try and go where no team has ever gone before 18 and 0 Divisional round, Cowboys go for the three-peat against the Giants. Tony Romo, eight touchdown passes in the first two games against New York. Carroll Owens, how much will he play? Giants going for an NFL record ninth straight road win. Their only road loss at Dallas in week one. What to watch for? AFC side on Sunday in Indianapolis. Colts, San Diego. Colts lost in San Diego when 
They couldn't field 45 healthy bodies. Peyton Manning threw six interceptions. The Colts offense healthy now. Marvin Harrison expected to start in that lineup for the Colts. See if San Diego can do it to them again. All right, meanwhile, back to the Jags and Pats. And Tom Brady's so cool. He's so clean cut. Not there, but in the game he was. Uh, you name it, Brady did it. Uh, he said afterwards, I could have gotten an Academy Award for that fake. Wes Welker touchdown, and why not? You know, Ben Watson got one early. Let's give him one late. Again, the stats bear repeating. Brady, 26 of 28, 262 yards and three touchdowns. It was all Brady after the game because, well, he was really good. <laughs> yeah. You know, unfortunately, Tom didn't slip on the way to work today, so... <laughs> Uh, I mean, he's, he's playing lights up. Those guys, when they're open like that, I mean, that's my job to hit them. They were open every time. Uh, so it's easy to play quarterback when you got receivers that are always open, an offensive line that never lets anyone touch you. So uh, it makes, makes it fun to play. Yeah, it was a little disappointing in us, too. He missed. Thought it could have. Uh, you know, Tom's uh, he's been a great great quarterback for us in his whole career here. He's been great in the big, late, big games. And... Uh, you know, outstanding tonight. When you're confident in the guys around you, and, and I've been around for eight years and in the same offense with the same coaches, so I have pretty good confidence going out there knowing that if I just do my job, everything will take care of itself. Oh, so self-unassuming. Come on. Besides the greatest postseason game in NFL history, Saturday night marked Tom Brady's 125th career start, including playoffs. He's won 99 of 125. Seriously. That 792 winning percentage, the highest among quarterbacks who started their careers in the Super Bowl era with a minimum of 75. If he gets win number 100 in the AFC Championship game, the Patriots will go for a fourth Super Bowl in seven seasons. Again, as in life, advantage Brady. Primetime performers when we return. Just have a hunch. Brady may be one of them, but who's joining him at the party?